everyone. Johnny from Shoney Gaming here. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Don't worry. Nothing's wrong. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Last week, uh, unfortunately, I had to cut my stream short on Thursdays and Fridays. Couldn't stream uh, due to health concerns and went to the doctor. Nothing's wrong. I'm fine. It was just a little bit of stress. Came all out of the neck area and a little bit of upset, upset tummy. So I had to drink tea a lot, which was horrible. But there you go. It's April. Good to see you, buddy. So yeah, it's uh, Moonfall. I'm a lot better. Um, thank you very much for asking. Frogu, welcome back, Mr. Redcard. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, unfortunately it, it was a lot of stress which had effect on my stomach, which had effect still has effect on my neck area. So yeah, I had a little bit of dizziness and dizziness in combination with, with with an upset stomach, and I didn't feel right. So yeah, all those things put together, I thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually go to a doctor. Yeah, let's go see a doctor, shall we? Yeah, I had some blood tests and went to the went to the hospital. Nothing's wrong. So I'm 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 good. It's all due to stress and. Uh, wrong posture actually also <laughs> there's a lot of that involved as well behind my desk but hey that's uh, yeah that's uh, a, a learning curve right there so i'm all good i'm back and uh yeah uh, did you guys know you can sub for free using amazon prime indeed <laughs> you can use your uh, your amazon prime if you want to so yeah it's uh, hey jamal how are you doing buddy hope you're doing well and uh, my wife said i should do lunges to stay in shape that would be a big step forward and immediately he's on to the red cards unfortunately this screen does not have red card yet so <laughs> i would keep them in your pocket for the flight keep them keep them in the pocket for your flight but well played sir well played ah <laughs> oh, thank you very much there for that uh for that resub right there eight months in a row already you absolute legend there you go well you saw it over there actually awesome 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 thank you very much for that support we truly truly appreciate that so uh, thank you very much. Um, oh, and there you go, Mr. P222. Triple two is in the house. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing? Abel just resub. Thank you very much for that as well. So how are you? Miss you. Hope you're well. Go Netherlands. S Man, how is Australia doing? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in quite a while, but I'm glad you're here, buddy. I'm absolutely glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those that do not know, Mr. P used to stream flight simming, and now he's gone over to the dark side that is called racing. <laughs> be ashamed. Be ashamed. You're well. Just got back uh, on the sim. Really? Well, you're in for a treat, my friend. You really are in for... Oh, and cheers as well. Thank you very much, Jamel. It's already starting out as a party. It's so good to have you back, buddy. Which means we might do a collab in future again. You know what's happening. And no, I'm not eating that crap you in, in a bottle you call actually edible stuff. Vegemite. Yuck. It's horrible. So, uh, Bizarro, thank you very much for that resub as well. That is truly, truly appreciated, buddy. It is so much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, it's <laughs> make sure Shoney Gaming eats the Vegemite. Yeah, I have an upset stomach. I need to... I only have a small cup of coffee today. A small cup of coffee. This is my second cup. Guys, it's horrible. I so miss you. <laughs> Anyway, and here comes the rehydrate. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll combine that one. Uh, so, yeah. Today, we're going to do a very simple flight. We're going to continue our flight in Africa. This is a very boring and straightforward flight. You have been warned. It's worth flying from Burkina Faso to Niger. That's actually how you pronounce it. Niger. And we are flying to the uh, capital, Niamey. And we will be landing there. It's really, it's, it's a chat. No, 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 no. We've done chat. We've done chat. You know that. Uh, so yeah, what, what are we going to do today? Well, actually, boop. We are going to do, uh, well, that flight, indeed. Let's pull up the map right here. And that is the flight that we are doing today. It's just a straight line from A to B. Really simple. Take off from Ogadougou in Burkina Faso, land in Niamey in, in, in Niger. We have to do this, otherwise we cannot cross these countries of our list. So yeah, we have to visit them. In this case, I'm just visiting the capitals, the countries themselves. 
Well, it's not an area you want to hang around a lot in, let's face it. I mean, Burkina Faso and, and Niger, they're, they're countries which have a lot of upheaval going on, a lot of bad stuff. So yeah, you really don't want to hang around a lot there. As a, it, It's not a, a tourist destination, let's just say. So yeah, it, and Niger is even worse. Niger is even worse than the Burkina Faso. Any hippos on the way? None, zero, <laughs> zilch, nada. So uh, yeah. Our flight for today, right there, that's the flight. It's, as I said, straightforward, simple. Yeah, not much to say, not much to talk about it, actually. Other than, uh, let's uh, go click, clickety-click. And um, what we are also uh, going to do is we're going to take off from runway four today. So that is, uh, it's it's just a straight flight into the, uh, into the, uh, into the wind. So we're constantly battling, uh, battling uphill. We're battling uh, headwinds. And we are going to land on runway 09. So we're going to take off from 4 and we're landing in Delta Romeo Romeo November in uh, on runway 09. In this case, right. 09 right. So, um, yeah. Easy peasy Japanesey. There is the airport right here. As you can see, Bizarro already on the runway. Well played, my friend. Well played. All right, let's go. Let's go outside. Now, I have noticed, actually, <laughs> that using my mouse to actually uh, do the views outside, yeah, that causes a lot of stress on my uh, on my neck and my arms. So we're going back to the uh, to the controller. There we are on the outside view right here. Awolt is already also on the runway right there. We have Weem and the TBM lining up. Oh. It's good to see you guys. It's good to see you guys. It's good to be among friends, isn't it? It's good to be among friends, especially at times like these. I mean, let's face it, we <laughs> Christmas is coming up and stuff. So yeah, you really, really the holiday. Well, let's just say the holidays. The holidays are coming up. So yeah, it's it's something you, yeah, you want to be among friends, don't you? You want to be among friends. Uh, did you not download small? Oh God, I forgot that. Thank you very much for... I knew I kept forgetting something, Abel. And that's it. That's what I was forgetting. Hey, good morning, Dairy Italian Yang fan. How are you doing, buddy? How are you doing? All right, so uh, let's uh, turn on uh, the uh, um, uh, the master switches right there. There it goes. And then we are giving it the full mixture and a little bit of throttle. Yeah. A little bit of throttle. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know. I'm doing the kind of Swedish shit. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> so is there that. All right. I'm uh, starting the engine. Bippity-boppity-boop. Easy enough. Turning on the avionics. And we're switching over to the, uh, to the class Echo right here. Saying, uh, selecting right there. Okay, that's working. Let's zoom in a little bit. He loves Vegemite. Yeah. No, no, I, no, I don't. Noted. Good to see you. Yo, what's up? <laughs> I shouldn't be saying so, to stop like what's up, should I? No, no, I can't get away with that. No, I can't get away with stuff like what's up. That slapping, no, that, I mean, no, just, just no, you know, it's, no, <laughs> Vegemite sandwich, indeed. <laughs> and she said, do you come from the land down under? <laughs> indeed, there we go. All right, let's turn on the lighting right there and the taxi lights because we are going to give it a whirl. Off with the, uh, with the brakes. Giving it a little bit of power. I like to move it, move it. There we go. That's buzzing no cap. What's up? <laughs> exactly. Yuri, how are you doing? How is Germany today? How is Germany today, buddy? No worries about that, Italian Yang fan. It's just a straightforward flight. It's really easy. I mean, we're going from A to B, literally literally we're going from a to b it's it's so easy it's almost ridiculous all right let's go to the runway 
And then uh, Germany for once is beautiful. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. At least that's something, buddy. At least that is something. <laughs> All right. Easy peasy, Japanesey. You can, uh, for those that have not claimed it, you can now claim the Swazant Nerf if you want. <laughs> Predict 69 is now an option. Why? Hmm. Interesting. Somehow my rudder seems to be a little bit off. More sheep, how are you doing? Might have to, uh, uh, might have to get on this, uh, but with the F14, yeah, that's a straight line out there. It's, it's just straight, basically. I'm not sure what's going on. Hang on a tick. Uh, there is something wrong here with my... It's, it looks like there's something wrong with my rudder pedal, but I don't know what. I don't know what. Or do we have a very, very strong side wind? I don't think we do. There's no data yet, but... Well, we are trying to line up at runway 4. GT, uh, GTS Aviation, uh, Marcel from Freebird, hello, yes, how are you doing, I remember that. Uh, your, by the way, your interview, Marcel, will be uh, uh, up pretty soon, actually. I've given it to uh, Emeka, who is now editing it, and it's coming out pretty soon on the YouTube channel. So, uh, welcome to the channel, buddy, how are you doing? I do remember you, definitely. Taking a walk in Wassenaar, well, that is a good thing, that's, that's never a bad thing. You did a flight from Cornwall to the UK in 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I'll believe that, buddy. A 32 kilometer walk. Well, <laughs> that sounds excessively healthy. Yeah, that sounds really healthy. Uh, Southeast Asia, Yuri. Southeast Asia. We are now currently always on Southeast Asia. It's still the most stable one. Unfortunately, it's still the most stable one. All right, let's see if we can uh, turn this crate around shall we although i am a little bit hesitant about the um, about the the side winds that i'm currently getting yeah it's a very low ping it is but somehow it's more stable than any other server so oh well, look at that yeah right there at the top the wind sock that explains it. Might even try the PC-12. Well, that is an option. <laughs> you could do it in the Dark Star in like three, three seconds flat. That's an option as well. All right, my friends. I am going to throttle up right now. Let's get the show on the road already. Everyone can follow. It's just such an easy flight today. So, yeah. We're going full throttle, throttling up to about, well, throttling up to about uh, uh, 55, 60 knots. Whoa. No, 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 no. There we go. Yeah. Whoa, that was a strong side wind. Good Lord. Wow. That is one strong side wind right there. Ah. You know what helps? Flaps, actually. I didn't back off with flaps. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Say it ain't so. And I'm being buffeted from left to right here. It's horrible. What's going on, people? <laughs> why, God, why? <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, get up to to, uh, to about 2,000 feet. Line up with the uh, with the flight plan. Yes, I am still flying manual. Don't worry about that. 2,003 between two and 3,000 feet should be more than enough. So uh, yeah, let's set the autopilot to about uh, 3,000 feet, shall we? That should be enough. The heading is now set for um, yep that direction right there. That is 075. We're setting heading and we're setting altitude. 
let's go to navigation right there should anything happen i can just press the uh, the autopilot button and we'll, it will take over quite nicely so yeah let's uh, yeah windy definitely uh doing gliding through uh though uh, as i am four miles away from the world largest gliding center lesham gliding center in uk ah indeed but you're doing that real life there uh, moishi is that real life or are you doing it in sim and for those that are wondering if you're flying um in uh, microsoft flight simulator in the glider these days and yes you can fly glider these days you can also actually both that's cool buddy that is excellent uh, but you can actually uh, use a winch to get off the ground, as uh, you would do on a glider field. But if you attach it in front to a Cessna 172, the one Cessna 172 can actually pull you up in the air. So if you have a mate and you want to fly a glider, the mate can actually help you get up to higher altitudes in the sim. And then you can disconnect yourself. It's really cool. I mean... The fact that you can do these things, it's so cool. And there's so much more to discuss and coming up. So much more to discuss and coming up. I mean, oh, such, such cool things. All right. This, by the way, is Ogadugu, where we are now uh, flying. Ogadugu, right here. Behind us, we have uh, Yuri is there. I see Yuri. I see Ween. I see Awold still on the runway. Oh, dog, how are you doing? If uh, and if you had a spruce goose, you can pull. Uh, <laughs> you can pull you and twelve of your friends at once. Indeed. If you have the F fourteen, you can rip the wings of a glider. Or if you have the Dark Star, if you use the Dark Star, you can basically launch the glider into space. <laughs> so you could basically tow in uh, a glider for an entire flight. In, th in theory, Moonfall, yeah, as long as the, uh, I, I think as long as the, um, the the pilot does not disconnect, then I'd say yes. Yeah. I, I, I assume so. Yeah, that would be a nice challenge. Joe Fox, how are you doing, Joe? Hope you're doing well. Hope you are doing well. Welcome, buddy. Welcome. So, uh, yeah. Not if the glider has um, a water ballast that the 172 would struggle to take off. Well, yeah. But in theory, it <laughs> of course. In theory, it, I know you can actually use the Cessna 172 in the sim towing your friend. I've seen that. I have seen people do it. So that's, actu that's actually a thing. That is actually a thing. And of course, guys... A few days ago, we had the development update, which was really, really, really interesting, of course. A lot of new things coming up, a lot of cool things coming up. So, oh, there are a few things I actually need to show you. I am setting myself to autopilot right now, because I am going to show you a few things. Um, first of all, first of all, uh, next... Did I say this correctly? Before I crash into the ground again. Uh, why is this? It should be at 3,000 feet. There we go. That's a lot. Yeah, it's uh, it's lining up. There we go. Uh, question for the sim glider pilots. You guys also experience a lot of plus two um, uh, lift everywhere. Uh, in in Yeah, I heard these problems as well. I, I think, to be honest, Moonfall, I think they're being fixed in the new update. Uh, and I, by the way, Joe Fox, I'm doing great. Thank you very much for asking. So yeah, I want a D-Day glider at, uh, that a C-47 uh, can tow me up with. Then we can uh, invade someplace warm and demand beer. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. I'm feeling okay, guess. Uh, guess what, uh, sir? I got my trip done. Took me eight days, Saturday the 12th to Saturday the 19th. But I got it done, which I'm happy about. Congratulations, Joe. Congratulations. Well done, buddy. Well done. That is great news. That is really, really good news. Uh, okay, by the way, I am setting this to follow mode. Let's zoom out. As you can see on the map, it's just a straight line from A to B. Straight line from, in theory, 
Uh, Delta Foxtrot Foxtrot Delta to Delta Romeo Romeo November. That's the flight. We're flying from Burkina Faso to um, we're flying from Burkina Faso to Niger Niger. I think it's pronounced Niger. And that is Niamey, the capital, right there. One million people. It's yeah. We're flying in a straight line there. So. But I am descending, and I'm wondering why. So, why am I descending to 1,800 feet? Change to 47 then? Is that what you want? That's what he wants. That's what he wants. What he wants. That's what he wants. Um, watch the large green numbers in the VFR map. Which VFR map are you are you talking about the VFR map that or you mean the 28 and stuff like that? Right here? Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see, actually, but because it keeps on getting smaller. But yeah, that I think that's the... Uh, the uh, um, I'm actually not sure what that is, to be honest. Yeah, it is bouncy today. That is actually... Does anyone know what that is? Never really taken notice. I think that is... Uh, uh, Don't lose it. But you're right. Oh, interesting. Let me have a look. Numbers BFR map. Hey, sync rate, buddy. How are you doing? Thank you very, very much for that uh, rate. Welcome, welcome, sync raiders. How are you doing? <laughs> See what I did there, sync raiders. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, uh, good to see you, buddy. How are you doing uh, today? <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. We're flying today a simple straight line from uh, from Burkina Faso to uh, uh, to to uh, to Niger today. It's a straight line. Doing fine, thank you. Excellent, buddy. Great to hear that. Hope you had a wonderful, wonderful stream. Uh, I know, but sometimes you can just be happy and exclaim your joy. <laughs> it's as simple as that, Saint Right? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it, buddy. So yeah, it's uh, today we are flying to uh, to uh, from uh, from Niger to Burkina Faso. We're uh, heading uh, towards uh, um, uh, the the I think 65th country or 66th country. One or two of the total world countries that we've done so far. Uh, I fly around the world in a Cessna 172 to each and every single country in the world. Why? Reasons. Simply because we can. That's why. Yes. <laughs> because we have nothing better to do. That's why we're here. Very, very windy today. And uh, yeah, it's uh, actually, uh, we have a 15 uh, knot headwind. I need to lean my mixture, actually, I noticed. A little bit there. So that's, yeah, that's better. And... Uh, Actually, I wanted to show you guys a few things. First off, I have been busy. Shoney has been busy. He has. Yes, he has. Uh, let me pull up my Edge browser right here. Boop. There it is. Hello, Edge. We'll close that. Point. So, as you guys know, we have this around the world now. So, yeah. Uh, what is the box, uh, box screen? Which, uh, what do you mean by box screen? Uh, airspeed live because I have several screens and overlays and stuff going on so yeah uh, go forward where's my yeah that one uh, on your bra oh this you oh you mean this right here this is my that is my pride and joy my friend you mean that right there that is my pride and door joy that is a class Echo. It is from Shakeprint Simulations. And I have a very cool announcement on Friday about this. What this is, is a piece of hardware that 
actually is, uh, it connects with SPAD Next. You have to have a separate program to run this, but what it does is it controls my entire plane. So let me zoom that in. Now here I go to, for instance, uh, you have SPAD, excellent. Then this will work out of the box. But there is a wonderful announcement coming about the Class Echo on Friday. So keep that posted. I can't say anything just about it, but it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Now let me show you what this does and how cool this piece is. What you can do is if you go, for instance, you have all kinds of settings. So this, it, 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 you can load up snippets and that basically means you can load up profiles for the Class Echo. Uh, as you could like any other peripheral that you have, for instance. Hey, Patat, good to see you, buddy. So, for instance, if you have the uh, the Bravo or the the, the, the Alpha Yoke, you know that you can uh, download online snippets, for instance, or you can program it through through SPAD Next. And SPAD Next will create a profile. You have the Alpha and the Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, buddy. <laughs> You're talking my language here. You're talking absolutely my language here. We can communicate like friends. Um, so yeah, if you have that, you can create your profile. Now, what this does is it actually acts as a lot of things, a lot of cool things, actually. First of all, you have all your information right here. It is a little bit hard to see, but you have your flight information right here. Now, I can set, for instance, the autopilot right here if you watch the autopilot i can zoom in a little bit and i can change all kinds of settings from here i can change the altitude stuff like that annika hey excellent thank you buddy i can change the altitude i can change the uh uh, um, uh the altimeter right here so i could for instance change that right here let's set that back i never changed it correctly actually uh, I can change the airspeed, the course, the heading, everything. So that is pretty cool. I go to a second screen. I have all my communication settings right here. So for instance, you can now see at the bottom right there, XPDR. Oh yeah, it's, it, it gets better. It gets better. Trust me, airspeed. For instance, I can set my code right here. So 1200 is for VFR. There we go. Boop. Done. It's now changed. Right down here at the bottom, I can change all my COM settings. I can change my NAV settings if I want to pre-program them. Really cool. Now, controls. It gets even better. I can turn on avionics. I can turn on light panels. Everything works. It's awesome. <laughs> and it turns on Shoney. It's on standby. I know it is. <laughs> oh, you mean my... Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Now it's not. <laughs> there we go. You were right, actually. You were absolutely right. So, uh, aviation. <laughs> uh, we have here, for instance, all the lightings. I can turn on the beacon lights if I want to. I can turn the nav lights. I can turn the strobe lights. I can do anything. Landing, taxi. So you can turn on the lights. I can turn on the parking brake right here. That's an option. Turn on the parking brake. Turn it off. Uh, I can turn on the engine. Piddled heat. No problem just all works now if i go to gps and this is where it really starts to become cool amazing for me good to see you buddy this is where it becomes really cool i can change to the pfd or the mfd and i can actually do all i can completely control my garmin completely control my garmin i can pull up the flight plan alter that i can pull up the menu I can pull up procedures, everything. I can do everything right here. And here is my entire engine settings. Now this is just, just a one profile for the Cessna. There are profiles for the A320, completely different. There are profiles for the 737, completely adjusted to the 737. There are working profiles for the Phoenix. I kid you not. This thing works with the freaking Phoenix. It works. It's that cool. So that is the power of the Class Echo. An awesome piece of kit. Now coming Friday, so you basically control your entire plane. That's what you're doing. Coming Friday, <laughs> take my money. Wait, wait, because, and here comes the kicker. 
I cannot tell you exactly what's coming out, but coming Friday, I will be doing a, um, a, a sponsored stream by Thrustmaster. On Friday, we will be doing... Well, Airspeed, watch Friday. Trust me on this. Because what is happening, there will be a sponsored stream on Friday from Thrustmaster. And um, I will be testing a TCA, um, a TCA officers pack. Pretty cool. It's I got that from Flights and Webshop and we'll be doing a TCA officers pack. I will be doing an A320 flight from start to finish, including uh, how to use SimBrief, how to integrate that into uh, SimBrief information into, for instance, little nav map, how to use chart fox, but also, of course, how to use Navigraph <laughs> at the top right there. Uh, we will be uh, programming the A320 fly by wire, start to finish from cold and dark. We will be flying it from the Airbus factory at uh, Finkensteinwerken, whatever, uh, in, uh, in Hamburg. So that is uh, Echo Delta Hotel India. And we will be landing it in Toulouse in Banyak. And that will be uh, Lima Bravo Foxtrot Oscar. So it's about a two hour flight. Pretty cool all in all, but there will also be a huge shake print class echo reveal. There will be a class echo reveal. So I will show you guys something. It will blow your freaking minds. It's really cool. It's really cool. So watch out for that one. Watch out for that one. Uh, found out the answer to my question. Uh, the big numbers and the maximum elevation figure. That's it. You're absolutely right there, Delta Vector. And thank you very much for sharing that with me. Now we've learned something new. Yay! <laughs> it's always good to, to, to share with friends, isn't it? <laughs> hmm? So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really, really, really cool piece of kit. And you can change so much with it. it it's, it's pretty awesome. So the Claus Echo in itself is already a very cool piece of kit. You can either buy the shell and uh, get the um, get the screen and the, the uh, uh, Arduino board that's in there because the, it's run by an Arduino board. And you can also uh, get uh, an entire kit for like $200 or something like that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Shoney and, hey, Stealth Wolf, good to see you. Tired but happy today. Was at a concert last night? I heard that, yeah. <laughs> Called the Blossoms, indeed. Well, hope you, uh, glad you enjoyed yourself, buddy, right there. Uh, unavailable, we can't give an indication when this product is available again. Uh, which product are you talking about, uh, Jamal? Are you talking about the Claws Echo? So, yeah. Take my money. Friday is Black Friday, right? It is, indeed. It is, indeed. But, Jamal, trust me. Wait for, wait for Friday. I, I like the fish. I, I mean, I love this thing. I, I love it, but wait for Friday. Just wait. Trust me on this. Trust me on this. Waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A few moments later. <laughs> it's, uh, you have to wait. I know. A few. Uh, wait a few. It's not my strong side. I know. I have the same problem. I have the exact same problem. I know. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's 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 a thing, but trust me on this. Wait, wait for that. Uh, wait for what's coming out. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. A free giveaway to every viewer of Shoney. <laughs> no, I'm not that rich. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a guy from the Netherlands streaming my flights. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Airspeed life, if only, if only. Bugger. <laughs> we have Weem in the air. A red dragon behind us. Awold also. Uh, amazing for me, a new device. Uh -huh, maybe. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Bizarro and Yuri, Yuri in front of us. The Netherlands is a pretty wealthy country. So, yeah, the Netherlands is a wealthy country. I am not. <laughs> there is a difference between the country itself and me as an in uh, in inhabitant of the Netherlands. So, uh, I have a device. <laughs> Do you want to share that information and remind you it is family friendly here? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. What were we talking about, actually? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
before we had those wonderful raids, uh, ask the government then sponsor Shoney Gaming. <laughs> now, wouldn't that be hilarious? Wouldn't that be a thing? All right, my friends. I was opening the browser because yes, we were talking about um, we were talking about the world flight. This is the world flight that we are currently doing. Pretty cool. We are already done a large part of Europe, of course. Uh, we are now currently flying in this area right here, Burkina Faso to Niger. And uh, then we are heading back tomorrow to Benin, by the way. We're flying from Niger to Benin. And then onwards to Nigeria. We are ignoring Chad because we've done that. <laughs> they have many bikes. Indeed, we, we have. So yeah, this is pretty cool. But what I have been busy with, and this is pretty nice as well. As you know, what we first did was right here. That is our European trip. Our European trip, which is pretty cool. You can see it right here. You can zoom in. This is the exact route we have taken, by the way. But what's so cool about this, and you can find a link to this in the Discord channel, is if you click it right there, you have, for instance, you can select a flight right there. So our first flight, not only can you click the link here and get a direct link to download the flight plan, which is nice. But there's also a link to actually that flight in YouTube. So you have the full playthrough if you would want to watch something back. So yeah, we have all the flights should be in there from Europe. As you can see, a total of uh, 65,000 uh, 65,000 uh, 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 kilom kilometers of flying, 32, 35,000 uh, 35, nautical miles. So yeah, I wish I had uh, this level of planning inside me. Airspeed, this is just what I do each week. <laughs> I plan it on a weekly basis. If I would plan this ahead for months, I would go nuts. I would go absolutely bonkers. So yeah. This is basically planning uh, Airspeed Live. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that sub. Oh, actually, that was Jamel who gave Airspeed there a sub. That is very, very generous of you, Jamel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He works in IT, natural for him to plan. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> Kinda. So yeah, it is. Uh, th this is the entire flight plan just for Europe. I'm also busy, busy making a flight plan for uh, Africa right now. So a total of 110 flights. There are a few missing in there. Uh, for instance, uh, the flight, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. There was a flight right here. If we go to this flight right here, that should be flight, whoop, flight 18. And you will see from flight 18, it bumps to flight 22. So why 18 to 22? If you guys remember, that's the place where I crashed. So uh, 19, 20 and 21 are actually just flights, me flying back to, uh, to Minsk, where we started off from that first flight. So that's the reason why there are discrepancies right now. But all in all, all the flights are there. All the streams are there. So. You can just simply click on the flight and watch it back. So that is finally done as promised. Finally done as promised. Now, uh, what also happened, of course, was four days ago, four or five days ago, we had the, uh, the dev update stream, the dev update stream. And that was pretty cool because there were a few very, very good announcements in there. Of course, we had... Ooh, that's a little bit noisy. Right there. <laughs> so that's a little bit better. For those that are wondering what just happened, um, well, Yuri just passed us in the DC3 right there. <laughs> uh, by the way, Yuri, uh, kind of disappointed you're not upside down in the DC3, but, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying... Exactly, exactly, Jamel. Not inverted. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Yuri. I don't know what you just said, but yeah. 
Naughty, naughty. <laughs> naughty, naughty. So, yeah. Silent protest got cancelled. <laughs> yeah, but it's... Oh, man. Look at that thing. It's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. All right. Back to Edge Browser. There we go. Because exactly what you were saying, the AA UI looks so cool. What's coming up? We have a few very, very cool things coming up here. First of all, of course, we have a few world updates that are coming up uh, this year and that are planned. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> uh, GTS Aviation, uh, you got compliments about your stream from a couple of uh, infantry cadets I just met here at Walsdorp. <laughs> well, hello, my friends. Hope you're doing well there in Walsdorp. Send them my love. Send them my love and my respect. So, uh, yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, what are we doing currently is, or what are we, uh, 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 what's coming up this year is the roadmap for 2022. Really, really cool because there are a few very cool things coming out. Uh, first of all, of course, we have the world and city updates. This year we have, uh, I think, uh, three city updates and four world updates. The first one being New Zealand, which is uh, created by Orbex. Doesn't really surprise me, to be honest, because Orbex already uh, released the, uh, M, uh, the DME, uh, the digital, eleva uh, uh, digital elevation map, already for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, for uh, New Zealand. So, yeah, that was already, of course, coming out. Um, they already had that, actually. But to be honest, it's great that everyone is getting access to that right now. It's, it's truly cool. And let's face it, guys. I mean, New Zealand, it, it's one of my dream countries I really want to go to. I really, really would like to go to. I mean, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. But then everyone's getting it. So, that's cool. Finally, we're getting an update for, for New Zealand. That's great. Uh, of course, there are uh, two world updates coming after that. Then the city updates are coming. So we have the city updates two, three, and four in a row. Wonder what that's going to be. Shoni wants to live in a hobbit house. Who doesn't want to live in a hobbit house? I mean, come on. If you look at Bag End, don't you want to live there? I do. Hell, I, I walk around barefoot. So, yeah, except, yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Well, I want to live at Bag End, but at a full size. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, normal size, yeah. As long as it has glass fiber. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, okay, so we're having three city updates, which I'm really looking forward to, because the city updates that came out Last year were already a large improvement on the cities that were there, especially the cities in Germany got uh, got 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 a very very large improvement there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have the local legends that are coming up seven again. So in uh, the first one coming up in February, so that's really cool. Looking forward to that one. And uh, there are total in seven. So it's April, May, June, July, August, and October. Looking forward to that. We have the famous flyers, which is the ATR right now. Really good as well. So now I got Isengard stuck in my hand. <laughs> and the ceiling is too low. In my case, yeah, yeah. I'm one meter and uh, I, I'm a 184 centimeters. So 184 centimeters. It's like six foot two, something like that. Six foot one, six foot two. Something like that. So, yeah, me walking around in, 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 in a hobbit hole. Yeah. That's a lot of head bumping right there. Boom. Ooh. <laughs> kind of like that. All right. So, we have the famous flyers. There are seven of them as well coming out. Uh, uh, really looking forward to those as well because these are usually very, very detailed planes. And, of course, there's a hydrate right there. <laughs> but... And I think Airspeed Live, yeah, Airspeed Live already touched on this subject right there. The most important one, I think, is the AAUIs. Now, what does AAUI stand for? I have no freaking clue. Yeah, they explained it, but it's, it's basically what's happening is 
everything uh, systems under the hood are getting upgraded to and, and and improved now this was kind of a bit of a surprise as you guys remember working title already of course released the garmin if they released the garmin uh, g1000 nxi it is now standard in the flight sim if you load it up it's there which is great because the garmin is a gigantic improvement over the original that we had at launch Working title also always stated we are going to improve the G430, 530. We're going to improve the uh, G3000, which is, for instance, fitted into the TBN. We're going to improve the uh, the um, uh, a lot of the planes. Actually, that we're going to prove, improve the system of, of a lot of the planes. And then everything went silent. After the release of the G1000, everything went silent. And last month, they started to release the uh, G430, 530 Garmin systems. You can already download that from the marketplace, by the way. So if you want the new improved version, you can download that from the marketplace currently. It doesn't have full functionality yet, but there's it, it's coming. It's coming. Now, what is so cool about this... Of course, this is one of the, the uh, this is the local legend. Yes, the caribou. Really strange plane, by the way. Never seen that thing. The caribou. I mean, look at that. That's weird. That's just weird. Cool, but weird. So that's one of the uh, uh, the famous flyers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, local legends. Local legends. Looking really, really sharp already. These are the interiors. The exteriors they did not have at that current time, but the interiors they did have. But here we go. This is the one that we're looking for. It is the, indeed, the AAUI-1. This will be released in January already, apparently. I still see a Sobo as Asbo. <laughs> wow. Actually, that's a red card worthy. Yep. <laughs> That is red card worthy. All right, why is this not showing up? There we go. All right, so we have here the new carbon Garmin uh, G430, G530, uh, <laughs> as sober. Wow. Uh, updates, you can already get this for a little bit, actually. So yeah. I don't think it means anything, actually, in French. And they admitted they uh, their weather radar was not good enough for airliners and going back to have a talk with Meteo, Meteo Blue. Yes, Ewald. Yes. Yes, they really did. They, they did explain that that wasn't working correctly and they had to do something about that pretty soon. So, yeah. These are a few startup screens that they showed from the uh, G430, G530. This is the 430. The 530 is the expanded version one. Basically the same thing, just a little bit bigger, a few more buttons. But it's basically the same thing. But that's, there is a coming up a CJ4 overhaul. So if you own the premium versions, as you guys know, I am one of the, the, the persons that bought the premium version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And for a long while, it, at the start, I would say the premium version added a lot of extra planes and a lot of cool stuff. It did. They added a lot of extra planes, a lot of cool stuff. However, um, after we got more and more releases from uh, developers, the planes that um, that were in the uh, in the uh, in the in the premium version and the deluxe version, they kind of lost their luster. Basically, they 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 were unfinished. Uh, they were. Yeah, there were just, they're okay planes, they're fun to fly, but yeah, they need a lot of mods actually to get them working a lot better. I wasn't impressed anymore. And if you just say, well, for the 12, uh, 12 or 13 hand-drawn airports that you got, yeah, they shut themselves in the foot a little bit, yeah. Or so it would seem, Airspeed Live. Or so it would seem, because here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. kicker. Yeah, I've only used one plane from the deluxe version. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the kicker. What's going to happen? And I always suspected that they would do that. 
but they are now actually doing it and actually they already dropped a hint a few months ago when working title said we are going to look at every single plane in the deluxe version and the premium version and give them a polish up what is happening now is they are finally they're currently working on the longitude and the cj4 they are getting upgrades like crazy the tbm is getting upgraded like crazy and that's just in the first AAUI release. That's for January. We're getting that in two months' time already. Now, these are a few pictures of the, uh, the CJ4 right here. So there's pretty cool stuff already. They're doing a lot of stuff. I can recommend watch the stream. Watch the stream, definitely. So that is coming out. The, this is the G3000 that's completely being overhauled, which is very cool. I mean, all these things... The, I have to admit, the TBM, they're doing a few things, but mostly on the G3000. Mostly on the G3000. Which is not bad. You can actually open doors. That's cool. That's fun. Kind of gimmicky, but okay. And the Citation Longitude. There's a complete list out there which shows what they're doing. Advanced VNAV climb and pass. I mean, they're auto throttle with FMS managed speed mode, full TCAS 2 system, takeoff and landing performance calculators, uh, deep system modeling with associating synoptics like bleed air, hydraulics, fuel pressurization, electrical. So these things are getting now a complete overhaul. Suddenly, the deluxe and premium versions might just become interesting again. They might just become interesting again. I mean, that looks very, very saucy <laughs> indeed. So yeah, it's, it's, it may be, it may be that these versions are actually, yeah, that, that the deluxe version is getting, finally getting what it, what it deserves. So, we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen, to be honest. We're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. But right now, it might mean that, uh, yeah, that we are getting, getting quite a bit of upgrades, actually. And that will be really, really, really cool. And finally, these planes are getting the attention they deserve, to be honest. I think they are getting the attention they deserve. I mean... It's not so much the 40 extra dollars that you're buying. Uh, and you're spending 40 extra dollars on a lot of planes and a lot of stuff. But, you know, it's, it's I mean, they were always a, a very lackluster. They were always very lackluster. Let's face it. You know, everyone wants to fly a really cool 747. Everyone wants that 747 to work. Now, I know that one was in the standard version, but still, you know, everyone's looking forward to that. Let's face it, how many of you guys and, and gals out there are waiting for the PMDG 747-800? I am. I am. I definitely am. I want a 747. I really do. You know, the 787 Dreamliner that's in there. Raise his hand. Exactly. I'm not. <laughs> Lies, Ewald. Lies. You want it. You know you want it. Hmm? 777 first. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Just Flight does a 747 classic. They do. They do. But I'm, yeah. I hope they can actually uh, make something good out of that. I do. I just, I just do. And that it's not just a kind of souped up version of the current version that we're already have. have. So, yeah. If it's on par with the 146, then yes. Then yes, yes. Uh, can we have an A380? Actually, yeah, the, it is. The, the, I mean, the B, the Bay, the Bay 146 is really, really good. So yeah, let's 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 hope that the 747 is is on par with that. If that's a tr the the case, then hell yeah, I'll throw my money at him. Uh, and the A380, actually, Italian Yang fan, Fly by Wire is working currently on an A380 version. So, yeah, you love the 146, but I have a personal uh, connection uh, to that. 
Ooh, do tell, do tell. Please, we, we love to know stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Um, Fly by Wire is currently working on the A380. The thing is that, um, first of all, nothing but deep respect for the guys from Fly by Wire. Really, I, I truly mean that. However, I do hope, I do sincerely hope that um, the quality of the A320 fly-by-wire does not suffer with the shared development into the A380. So, you know, too many, uh, too many stuff to do, too little resources to actually do it. You know, so yeah. My dad was chief electrical engineer on them. Ah, then that, yeah, then you, <laughs> then I see that connection right there. I know what you mean right there. Yeah, Chaz TV. I crashed my 747 after a 17-hour flight yesterday. Oh, oh, that's painful. That's painful. I have something similar, not quite, but something similar. Uh, for quite a while, I have been trying to get my hands on the, uh, as most. As most of you may know, um, the <laughs> as most of you may know, the uh, the um, um, there there are achievements in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Several. You can do a lot of achievements. You have the achievements in both the uh, Microsoft version. You have achievements in, of course, in uh, in the Steam version as well. So yeah. They're there. And there's one achievement I wanted for a very, very long time. The achievement that I wanted was uh, Frequent Flyer Miles. Frequent Flyer Miles is an achievement where you fly from uh, Bordeaux, uh, that is the headquarters of a Sobo, to, and I have witnesses, where you fly from the headquarter of a Sobo in Bordeaux and you fly to um, uh, to Seattle. That's a 10 hour flight, a 10 hour flight, 10 and a half hours, something like that. You can do that, for instance, in the 787, 747. Those planes are, are the planes where, where you could do that in. However, for a very long time, I had the problem that as soon as I crossed over from uh, uh, the European continent, I passed by Greenland and entered Canada, my frame rate would drop from about 40 FPS to 5. And then it would be unplayable. So, and that was happening for a long time. After Sim Update 10, however, that problem was solved. So, I did one test flight and actually it worked. And then I started to do that flight. I really wanted that achievement. So I planned in the 787 a flight from Bordeaux Airport all the way up to Seattle. Planned the entire flight in SimBrief. Programmed it. Used the heavy mod. I did use the heavy mod um, for the 787. And flew those flights. I flew them the first time. And there were actually people in our chat right there. Italian Yang fan was there, and there were a few others there that witnessed me landing. Witnessed me landing. It, it registered the flight in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I never got the achievement. I did that flight twice. Two times a 10-hour flight. Nothing. No achievement whatsoever. So, we are going to plan. Uh, Stealth was there too. Exactly. Stealth was there. Uh, I think Wien was there at a certain point. No, no, no. AJ Rawlings. AJ was there. At a certain point as well. And I think DC might have been there as well. DC Viper. So yeah. Um, whereas I did it in the Dark Star crash before the runway. And it worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I never get achievements in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes, you probably already did. But they don't show up. That's the thing. They don't show up. But you can actually uh, see them. So you, if you go to your uh, Xbox Live uh, app. You can actually find them there. Really annoying. So so far, I still haven't got it yet. But I uh, we're going to do a Dark Star flight where uh, we do this, uh, try to do this achievement in one hour and fifteen minutes flat. <laughs> so a lot of Dark Stars take off, go up to about one hundred and twenty thousand feet, 
go to Mark 9, speed over the planet, and then land at um, uh, uh, land at, at, at Seattle Airport. <laughs> Hopefully getting the finally getting the achievement. So fingers crossed. I will be planning that uh, maybe the coming month, maybe in December. So we're looking forward to that one. So yeah. Uh, was about 20 minutes from the airport and then I just dropped altitude and belly landed on a field. Oh, that's horrible. After 17 hours and then... Uh, oh, that's that's horrible. Seppelstramza! For the achievement, you need a Dreamliner, in my humble opinion. I flew the Dreamliner. I flew the 787. Woohoo! I flew the 787, actually. So, yeah, all those dark stars coming in. Yeah, exactly. What kind of surprises me is... How can I see your contrails? Since when is that? I know you could do that in the F-18 with the Warrior mod, but since when can I see your contrails? What's going on there? That's strange. Huh, interesting. But yeah, indeed. Five or six Dark Stars coming in at the same time. How cool would that be? <laughs> that would be pretty, pretty cool. Indeed, that would be pretty cool indeed. Must be chemtrails. <laughs> Bizarro. Red card right there. <laughs> Final sip there, Jamel. Final sip. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, there we go. There we go. There it is. Done and dusted. My final cup of coffee for today. <laughs> there is no justice in this world. So we're on water. That's fine too. That is fine too. Actually, we still we're flying in desert areas already. There's still a lot of lakes around. Kind of surprises me. Tiny little towns everywhere. Settlements. Huh. It's a lot busier here than I expected, actually. And we should be nearing the border. No, we're far off from the border, actually. We're still far off from the border. All right, if you want to fly along, by the way, you can. Of course, you always can fly along if you want to. Um, let me see. The nearest airport currently, that is Delta Foxtrot uh, Echo Foxtrot. Unfortunately, that's 53 nautical miles away. Yeah, so nothing really close up, close by. But you could always, uh, you could always uh, 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 slew into me. Uh, to slew, actually, you need to press uh, uh, use an F4, <laughs> an F14. Yeah, exactly. That will help. But you can you can also slew into me, and the way to do that is you press the Yankee key, then use the WASM keys and uh, or WASD keys. Sorry, WASD keys, and um, uh, the uh, you can use the keypad keys for height adjustments, and then simply slew into our little group right here. And continue your flight. It's not that hard. So, yeah. So, we are pushing our plane a little bit, of course, as we always do. Unfortunately, we need to do that because, uh, yeah, we got a lot of miles still to cover. We have a lot of miles to cover. Uh, currently, I think we're over the uh, 100,000 uh, kilometer mark, actually. And that's just a sixth of what we're doing. Uh, the estimation of our total flights is more than 600,000 kilometers in total flying in the Cessna 172. And that will be a flight for at least four more years. We've already s flown enough uh, kilometers or miles, 110 years to come, exactly. We've already flown enough nautical miles to circumvent the world one and a half times. Yeah. We're over 60,000, so actually, it's, it's, it, it, we're already just for Europe. That's just for Europe. No, we've done actually twice, so yeah. I just did a loop in a 777. <laughs> well, I see something weird going on right there in the air, but yeah. It's hard to notice, but. But you're up pretty high as well, so it's hard to see. It's hard to see. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's 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 looking good actually. Uh, this year, of course, uh, uh, we're now slowly but steadily closing up the year. Uh, I think in December, a lot of Sobo uh, personnel will. Be, uh, yes, I am. I am streaming tomorrow and on Friday, and on Friday. I'm both streaming tomorrow and on Friday, uh, the entire week. 
So, um, oh, excellent. I will take a look at that. I will take a look at that. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Asobo is free next month, or at least they're not releasing any updates or anything else, other than, I think, an emergency update they're currently testing on the um, on the beta test. So, it's Thanksgiving here. Wanted to be sure. Yes, of course. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, the last Thursday of November. That is true. That is true. Yeah, it's... It's not really a European thing, so I know it is, but uh, yeah. And um, so they're not really doing that much. They are uh, actually uh, 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 gearing up again for uh, the uh, 2023 development roadmap, which is coming up, of course. And yeah, they've been, they're have been they still working on a lot of issues that are coming out. Um, I think they'll mainly be focusing next year 2023 on uh, the way weather is implemented i think that's going to be a really really big thing uh are, do you have any ideas on what they might be focusing on next year i mean there are of course a few uh cosmetic things i would love to see changing uh waiting for the 50th anniversary edition well 10 years time <laughs> 10 years time who knows so uh yeah there are, of course, a lot of things coming up uh, which, which are very cosmetic, uh, which could be really cool. Uh, hoping they improve the weather. Yeah, the weather is the biggest thing, isn't it? Might be a new F uh, flight simulator by then. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I'm loading back in, and when you're uh, spawn on a player, it shows you where they're going. Yes, it is. It, it loads up automatically. Forza style over, uh, overreacting. I think, too. I think, too. But I think, to be honest... Um, <laughs> crash the desktop as well but it, the thing is that um, I think weather is will be one of the main issues there they will be focusing on next year I mean they've improved quite a lot actually and uh, they've already uh, a better D DX12 yeah that will be nice especially in VR if I turn DLSR in uh in, in, in DX12, it, it's, it goes kind of borky. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it kind of goes tits up. It's, it's, it doesn't work smooth, to be honest. And VR in, 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 in DLSR is, is horrible. It's really not that good. If they don't make a new flight sim with the, how popular this one has become, it will be a mistake by M Microsoft. Well, to be honest, yeah. I, the thing is that no one actually really expected Microsoft Flight Simulator when it came out two years ago. Uh, so, yeah. The thing was, Microsoft Flight Simulator had been off the radar for nearly 14 years before the release, for this release, actually. So, it, it, it really hadn't done that much anymore. And... Um, this has a 10-year plan, so we still have eight years left. Exactly. Exactly. That is true. Yeah. I'm not sure that it's just streamers there, Italian Yang fan. I think it has a few... It, streamers have helped. Yes. Um, but I also think that uh, when it was released... Do, 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 remember that when it was released, that was... Um, uh, late 2020s, we were in the middle of ju of COVID. So a lot of people had nothing to do at that time. So yeah, model matching, Jamel, yes. But yeah, you know, everyone was sitting at home. There wasn't much that we could do. So yeah, you know, I think COVID was one of the main issues that helped Microsoft Flight Simulator and don't forget, it was also, of course, immediately available on the Game Pass, which was ideal because... Oh, there he is, in the Tomcat. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was on the Game Pass, so basically you could download the standard version for free. It was just there. It became available on the Xbox as well, which has increased its popularity by a very huge amount you could argue that the uh, implemented features for the xbox um, were a disadvantage for the pc version 
But all in all, for its popularity, it, it, it gained new heights. And let's face it. Whoosh. Oh, I have not... Did I not install the Tomcat? I think I did. I, ha I own the Tomcat, so it should be in there. But it didn't look like the Tomcat, so... Need to look that up. Um, but if you look at Microsoft Flight Simulator, just the standard version... Uh, 3,587 uh, 3, in-game just on Steam. <laughs> wow. I think this will not go anywhere. It, it won't. It won't. That's the thing, you know. It's... If you just load up Microsoft Flight Simulator, the standard version, take away the fact that I have this special livery right there that you see. This is a, a created livery just for my channel. But if you have the standard version, you load it up right now and you would jump on top of me in the simulator, be it on the Xbox, be it on the, uh, on the PC, and look around, you'd see exactly the same thing as I would. There is hardly any need for, um, for sceneries. It looks absolutely amazing. I mean, if you want the same level of, of sceneries in Microsoft uh, or in, uh, in X-Plane or in, in Prepared, well, in Prepared, it's simply not even possible. And in X-Plane, it will cost you five, six hundred dollars dollars just to get something decent which doesn't even compare to this now don't get me wrong i'm not dissing x-plane here i mean the flight model of x-plane is still better than that it still is but that's only a matter of time in my opinion it's only a matter of time before microsoft flight simulator either is equal to or surpasses that that flight model simply because of the 10-year plan that Aerospeed Live just said. They have a 10-year commitment to upgrading Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, take a look at the sim updates that have come out. 11 updates already in two years' time. These are updates over a gigabyte. A gigabyte or more. So, yeah. You know, it's it can only get better and better and better. And you can see that also, for instance, I think always in the commitment of um, of Sebastian uh, from Asobo. Sebastian and Matthias, once they start talking about Microsoft Flight Simulator, you see them go down that rabbit hole. It just makes me smile. It makes my heart go a flutter. It's, you know, you can see them go down. They want to get the details right. They want to make this as good as they can. Don't get me wrong. Both Asobo and Microsoft are a company and they need to make money. They have to pay their wages to their employees. They want to make a profit. Everything. Yes. So it's always for them a... I think it's a, 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 a trade-off between what can we financially do and how far do we want our passion project to go down the rabbit hole? What is possible for us? And what can we finance to actually make, make it work? Because they're always a company. Uh, for me, Hellis was a nice surprise. Physics seems good enough. Uh, G2, that is. Yeah, exactly. That, I mean, you could see that they are, they're, they are working so hard each and every time to go to that next level and that next step. And that is why I am actually thinking that this year, first of all, they have been talking about the weather system. This year has to be the year of the weather system. They have to improve it. It just has to. I mean, it has to get up to par with, with X-Plane. It has to get up to par with everything. The reason I think that they have not released the weather engine for third parties is the fact that they want to get this right. Sebastian wants to get this right. So that's the reason I think that they have not released it to the to the public yet. Why they haven't opened it up yet. 
The other thing is, of course, flight modeling. They have to start improving flight modeling. They have been doing consistent upgrades for flight modeling each and every time. I mean, the plane, the G1000 that I started flying in August of 2020 is not the same G1000 that I'm flying now. So, hey, John Twitch, good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Welcome. Welcome. Snuggle up. Let's get, get in the back of my plane there, buddy. Get in the back of my plane. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, the thing is that we, we, we need, <laughs> doing well, thanks, excellent, my friend. We need to get that level of realism better and better and better each and every time. That's what we want as a, uh, <laughs> see that now. Well, take a beverage, put up your feet and enjoy, buddy. Hmm? You know, it's, the thing is that we, <laughs> well played, buddy, well played. But yeah, it's, we want to get this better and better and better, you know, and we want to stop the discussion. Microsoft flights, flight simulator, do not touch the buttons, do not touch the buttons. Um, Microsoft flight simulator, we, we want to stop the discussion. Microsoft, Microsoft flight simulator is a game. No, it's not. Not anymore. I know that a lot of um, X-Plane flyers and uh, prepared flyers would want to keep that um, want to keep that going, but it's it's not. DJ McDJ face. <laughs> First of all, welcome to the cabin crew, buddy. Snuggle up in the back there of my plane right there. And uh, I hope you enjoy the show, my friend. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the stream. Uh, the flight is absolutely and utterly boring as crap. Sorry for that. We're flying from A to B. Usually we're flying over a lot more country, but we need, we need to do this flight. <laughs> it's bloody cramped in the back here. I can tell you that. I know, but it's... <laughs> It's so cozy. <laughs> it's so cozy. I called it a game when it first came out, but now I understand. Uh, I, I uninstalled. Really? You are actually moving away from prepared? You are moving away from prepared. An honest man, <laughs> indeed. Uh, my plane isn't the F-14 on your screen. No, it isn't, is it? Now, I will I, I will make sure that I upload the... Uh, that I install the correct... Uh, the correct... Uh, 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 the correct... F14 in my in my uh, in my community folder. Somehow that got borked. But yeah, and when the Phoenix came out, yeah, yeah, that was a game changer. That was actually fun fact. Actually, that you say that SP Life because I've always said that as soon as we are getting as soon as we are getting study level, and I'm air quoting this study level high fidelity planes, the sim will change. The sim will immediately get a different view. The sim people will get a different view of the simulator. Most of the people that were saying um, that were saying Microsoft Flight Simulator is a game were people that were flying commercial on either X-Plane or flying commercial on Prepare. N there was nothing for them on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Absolutely nothing. I mean, the 787 was horrible in comparison. The 747 missed so much. Uh, I mean, there was simply nothing there. But as soon as these planes started to come out, it, it was perfect for GA. It was absolutely perfect for GA. But as soon as the Phoenix came out, as soon as PNDG came out, you could actually see a shift you could see a shift and that in my opinion the release of the 737 800 combined with the phoenix a320 that was the the moment everything changed for microsoft flight simulator and people started to lose that view of hey it's a game no no it's actually a simulator it's trying to be a very good simulator even uh, my favorite plane is also the 414 yeah, you would never see me uh, in a GA plane in prepared. No, because let's face it, if you're flying GA in prepared, this is not the view you're getting. You know, even here in the outback of Africa, 
it still looks like Africa. Let's face it. Uh, the thing I noticed most of all about um, X-Play Prepared Crowd is that they seem to think that if they admit that something with an Xbox version is actually better, they, uh, uh, they're just gaming and not the professional enthusiasts they built uh, themselves up uh, into in their minds. Uh, to be honest, DJ McDJ faced in a few cases, I don't. I think you're not that far off. It's not that I'm trying to diss these persons that that want to deny or want to ignore Microsoft Flight Simulator for what it is. It's more that they are afraid of losing that status in their heads of, oh my God, I cannot be taken seriously if I fly Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know why why you couldn't be. I mean, trust me, I've seen people flying. Uh, um, uh, fl uh, 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 flying prepared or X-Plane that had difficulty getting either the Phoenix or the 737 off the ground. So, and that, we're talking starting that thing up. Oh, there's a lot more buttons here. No shit. Sorry, I just said no shit. Yeah, well, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah, it's... It there you go, you know, it's, it's okay, we're no longer family friendly. There you go, it's done. <laughs> yep, yep. Red card for me. Mistakes were made! Mistakes were made! <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's <laughs> uh, so much detail, I'm dumbfounded. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, the, the, um, the Phoenix is amazing in detail and quality. It's absolutely bizarre how good it is, how good it sounds, how good it flies. It's all right. Yes, you need actually a, a separate program running uh, from Phoenix to get it absolutely perfect. But hey, if it works, it works. I don't care. Uh, I was prepared uh, simply, b uh, but, I ha uh, but I have opened my eyes. I know Microsoft Flight Simulator is the better sim and it does, uh, doesn't cost a small fortune like prepared. That's also very, very true. There is an emote. Yes, there is. <laughs> there are a lot of emotes there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's you're absolutely right there because it's, it's you know, it's it's... The cost that you would have to spend on uh, prepared for just the sceneries alone is is astronomical, and a similar plane compared to uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, where, uh, for instance, the the uh, um, the seven three seven eight hundred might go for up to two hundred dollars in prepared, it would go it goes. In, in Microsoft Flight Simulator for just 70 bucks. That's a fraction of the price, basically. So yeah, take a look at the streaming uh, on most days. Out of 50 streams, maybe four or five are GA. It's all airline. It is, it is. I'm, I'm one of the very few, actually, that's sticking to airline, uh, to GA. I am. Uh, I only follow one airline streamer and it's uh, Arctic because he's cool and it, it's, it's all about charity. Arctic Turn is very, very cool. Shout out to Arctic Turn. He's a very, very cool guy. Yeah. It's all about charity in his case. But the other than that, it's all GA and it's very few. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Oh, sorry to hear that your sim crashed, buddy. Uh, right. My wife dragging me out by the ear, so I'll catch you later. No worries, buddy. Uh, DJ McDJ Face, I'm here usually on 1 p.m. Central European Standard Time. That's 1200 Zulu. 1200 Zulu, 1 p.m. Central European Standard Time. I'm here tomorrow, and on Friday, I have a, uh, a sponsored free stream by Thrustmaster, and we're flying that commercial, funnily enough. So, And I have a great announcement from Shakeprint Simulations for the Class Echo. So keep an eye out for that one. But uh, you have a wonderful day, buddy. And otherwise, have a great weekend. Uh, the Phoenix is a uh, level of a plane would be uh, 120 in prepared in smaller market. Yeah, but that's the thing, airspeed. If you look at the amount of, of players from uh, that there are uh, simulators that are uh, um, simmers that are using Microsoft Flight Simulator in comparison to either uh, X Plane or Prepared, it's there is no difference between that. I mean the 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 amount of of sim simmers playing Microsoft Flight Simulator is so much higher in comparison than than these two other sims. It's pretty amazing, actually. It is. It is pretty amazing. 
So if you have a bigger market, you can drop your price quite easily, actually. I mean, the first time that PNDG launched their DC6, they launched it for $60. They were absolutely flabbergasted about the amount of money they made with dropping that price and still still raking in the dough and selling this thing like it was hotcakes. It was amazing. They were completely taken aback by that. Absolutely. Uh, for development uh, that went into the plane, I'm surprised it only cost $60. Me too. And let's face it, I mean, the Phoenix is 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 comparatively cheap. It's it's currently, is the Phoenix, I think it's still 35 euros, is it? Is it not? If I'm not mistaken, the Phoenix is still, I think, 35 euros or dollars. Uh, Phoenix, 50 euros. Ah, okay. 50 euro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. There we go. 50 euros, buy now, yeah. Yeah, I bought it when it was just came out. I think it was like 35 euros or something like that. But the 50 euros, it's still very much a very, very, very good price for that plane. It's, it's, it's really, really good. It is really good. It was 49.99, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, somehow it sticks in my mind at 35 bucks. I don't know why, I, I'm really, no, I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> Still, even then, $50 for a price like that, that's pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. So it's not on sale yet. It's not on sale. Maybe with Black Friday, who knows? With Black Friday coming out. So yeah. Uh, the 737-600 is indeed 35 euros. Yes, it is. It is. And that's well worth it as well. I own the 737-600. Very detailed plane. Very cool. Uh, sorry, I'm not saying much in chat as I fly along, uh, juggling my work and uh, uh, play at the same time, enjoying the chat and hope you're well. Red Dragon, do, do not ever, ever worry about that, buddy. Don't ever worry about it. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're flying along with us. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I'm glad you're enjoying the chat. That's the most, that's the only thing we can, can, can ask for, isn't it? That's the only thing we can ask for. So, uh, yeah. It's great, buddy, to have you here. Thank you very much. As I do appreciate all the lurkers out there and all the uh, the viewers and uh, and the followers. So, yeah. I mean, and of course the subs. <laughs> of course the subs. Um, 737 was indeed 35. Is, is indeed 30. Was or is indeed $35. I think there's currently a sale going on at PNDG where you get like five or 10 euros uh, or dollars of the price of the 7873, uh, 737-800. I think they've come down currently in price or they're on sale somewhat, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, uh, haven't flown the 737, been busy with the A320. Uh, yeah, it's a very cool plane to fly. It's, it's kind of different because the uh, MCDO is very different compared to the, uh, to the FMC. But they're basically the same thing. Once you get the hang of one, you get the hang of the other. So to be honest, funnily enough, funnily enough, uh, true story, I started flying the 737-600 for a little bit and I learned more about programming the MCDU in the from the FMC in the 737 than I did from fly by wire, flying the fly-by-wire version. So came, coming back to the A320 Phoenix, that helped me out a lot, actually, flying the 737 first. Really strange, but there you go. It's, yeah. There you go. It's it, <laughs> really, but I'm weird like that. I'm, I'm so weird. I'm so weird. Mm -hmm. I am. I am. <laughs> Awkward brain you have. I know, it's inverted. Who knew? <laughs> Does anyone know uh, the range of VOR? I think it depends. It kind of depends, uh, uh, Yuri. I, I don't know the standard range of a VOR. But yeah. But it's a long way. It is a very, very long way. So yeah. But if it's blocked by mountains or stuff like that, it can be greatly reduced. Greatly reduced. Um, depends on the VOR, you have short range and long range. 
Well, there you go. So what's the distance of a short and a long range? Or is, is there no specific distance? Is that, does that all has to do up to 200 miles? Does that has to, does, but does it have to do with the strength of the VOR signal itself? Is that different for each airport or, or VOR station for that matter? Most airport VORs about, are about 25 to 50 nautical miles on a road VORs are up to 200. Oh, excellent, excellent. Good to know. You flew Gignas, <laughs> that's, that's it, unsub, unfollow, block, report, start a petition. <laughs> Airlock dock, well played. Why is that not working? There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. It depends on your alt uh, 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 altitude as well. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does. But yeah, so uh, guys, it, it's, but it all depends on the VOR itself. Uh, little nav map has a range uh, you can select. Uh, don't know with uh, Navigraph. Pretty sure Navigraph does not have range rings for, um, for VORs actually. Let me have a look. Waypoints, airways, waypoints. I don't think they have that. Hey, they do have terrain right now. That's cool. I obstacles. Ooh, interesting. I don't think they have that. To be honest, I don't think they have that. Uh, in in Navigraph, it does not show the range. It doesn't. I don't. Although, 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 although. Let me see something right here. Let's pull up Navigraph right there. Now the VOR, do we have a VOR for the airport? We should, I think we do. We have an ILS. Let's see, uh, we're going to... Let's open the charts. Uh, next airport, click uh, NY. Okay. So that's the VOR. It says the elevation. It does say the elevation. However, it does not, it says high altitude range power, but it doesn't, yeah, high range or power, high altitude, but it doesn't say the exact range. It doesn't tell you the exact range. So no, I don't think you have something like, uh, like that. I don't think there's something like that, to be honest. Range is dependent on your height. Yes, it is. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. By the way, I've actually entered also a approach here. Let's over. Can we overlay that? We can. Uh -huh. An approach right here. And then we have actually an ILS landing coming up. Hey. So that's pretty cool. So what we can do actually is if we now go to our settings right here. Uh, the uh, ILS code there, that's 109.9. Boop. We are going to our comms and navigation. 1099, enter. Let's make that active, like that. There we go, Whoop. 1099. So the ILS has been set, excellent. There we go, easy piece Japanese. We could do actually an approach. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to our view. Don't 
you very much for that follow right there. IR68, IR68, welcome to the cabin crew, buddy. Welcome to the cabin crew. I hope you are enjoying yourself and I hope you're having fun. That's the most important thing. Uh, we try to uh, actually uh, just have a lot of fun here. Uh, by the way, uh, IR, snuggle up right there in the back. Yeah, I know it's cramped. I know there are a lot of people in there, I know. But it's cozy, you know? It's a cozy thing. So, hey, Cindy, good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? <laughs> it's cozy. And don't touch the buttons. Do not touch any of those buttons right there. Don't. Don't. Uh -uh. I see what you want to do there, but no. No, I know it is tempting. No. Back in your seat. So, yeah. <laughs> what button? None of them. None of the above. <laughs> No backseat piloting. No backseat piloting. Exactly. Where's the champagne? I checked the chiller. Is it empty? No, no, there should be more on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is running out, but yeah. What's this device you are using? You mean this device right here? That, my friend, is what they call a Class Echo by Shakeprint Simulations. Uh, so if you go to, let me see, shakeprintsimulation.com or shake, sorry, shakeprint.com, actually. Right here, the Echo. Yeah, it's... I know it gets a lot of people, but it's it's his favorite toy. It is. It is. It is my favorite toy. Um, what it actually does, it, it, it lets me control the entire plane. So, for instance, and the quickest way I can show you is, is with the, uh, uh, the MFDs. Uh, and the PFDs, it's it's really great. I can basically zoom in, zoom out. I can activate the flight plan from here, but I can also adjust the autopilot. So if I want to uh, actually uh, go up or down, I can. I, for instance, can say, well, well let's go to uh, down to 1,500 feet. There you go. 1,500 feet right here set. 1,500 feet right there set. It's it's as simple as that. I can control flight level changes. I can control the heading if I wanted to really easily. I mean, it's it's an incredible, powerful tool. The beauty of this is that uh, what you actually need... Uh, OBS, unfortunately... Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. The thing is that um, you need to have Spadnex running. You need to <laughs> buy, buy money. You need to have Spadnex running. So the first thing you actually need is Spadnex. Now, what is Spadnex? Spadnex is a program that will um, configure your uh, your peripherals. You can find that right here. Spad. Oh. Come on. I'm pretty sure Spadnex dot. There we go. Spad next. Spad next actually will uh, uh, will configure your programs, uh, your peripherals for you. So uh, your your for instance, uh, my um, I have a standard pro empty profile in Microsoft Flight Simulator for my for my Bravo, for my uh, for my Alpha, for basically for my uh, for everything, and. Spad, this program here, Spadnex, controls all of that. It detects when um, it detects when when uh, certain planes are loaded in, and you can uh, match your profiles in Spadnex to be detected uh, to see hey which plane is uh, plane is is coming up. So I'm loading this certain plane in. It will load the specific profile for that for your entire settings. If I switch, for instance, now to a 737 or a, 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 an A320, it will reconfigure my entire setup completely. It will reconfigure it. I can simply disconnect all the levers, uh, reconnect the uh, the Airbus levers that I that I own, and it's just up and running. I don't need to go searching through all those profiles that I created or make separate profiles for each and every one. I can actually connect my uh, my uh, uh, my peripherals to that profile. Works great. And you need to have spent that to actually get this running. That's the only way. So you need this to get that. However, once you have that up and running, 
that's a totally different story because then it's a total game changer. Uh, so you don't use the autopilot on the honeycomb. Oh, yes, I can use it. Actually, I can. It works, but yeah. I'm not homeless and you're still streaming and it's a year later. <laughs> That's a positive result. <laughs> I say yes. That is a positive result there, Aaron. Good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well, my friend. Yes, I am still here. You are not homeless. That's a good thing, definitely. Uh, I also have a MIDI controller, so all these buttons, I will never run out. I know, I mean, you could, in theory, you could connect a MIDI keyboard to your SPAD next, reconfigure all the keys, and basically play piano while flying in your plane. I'm not kidding. That's actually an option. Insane. Wouldn't do that. But still, it's an option. You know, if you wanted to, that's up to you. <laughs> so, uh, I have an X-Touch Mini. Uh, just got it for my birthday. Well, well played. Nice one. That is nice. That is definitely nice. And worked great with Spat Next. Hmm. So... What this does is, is it's a great tool. It's an excellent tool. However, however, uh, I air, and this goes for everyone else, coming Friday, so in two days' time, I will be doing a, of course, of course, <laughs> uh, air, uh, Stealth Wolf. There you go, red card. Um, coming Friday, I will be doing a sponsored stream with Thrustmaster flying the A320. I will be testing out the TCA kit. Now, at that time, um, I won't have access to either my Honeycomb Alpha or Bravo. And as my Class Echo is bolted onto my Bravo, I will not be able to use my Class Echo unless I remove that. Not really looking forward to do that. But there will be an announcement for the Class Echo from Shakepoint Simulations, I will show you something new and revolutionary from Shakeprint Simulations on Friday. So make sure you tune in at one o'clock and I will show you something absolutely freaking amazing. It's, it will blow your mind. Trust me, it will blow your mind. It's really, really, really cool. Hmm. Imagine a sponsor stream with honeycomb in the shot. Yeah, that, I don't think they would like that. <laughs> yeah. Grabs the popcorn and will be glued to my seat. Yeah, indeed. Aaron, thank you very, very much for that follow, buddy. Welcome to the cabin crew. As always, hydrate running empty. It will soon be refilled, buddy. Uh, snuggle in there. Yeah, snuggle. There is, I think there's still a little tiny space available there at the window. Welcome to the cabin crew, buddy. Thank you very much for that follow. I truly appreciate that, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, yeah, everyone uh, here is, of course, always welcome. Come on, join in. Have a little bit of fun. Why don't you? Why don't you? By the way, my friends, we just entered, uh, we just entered uh, Niger. Yes, that's actually how you pronounce it. Niger. So, yeah. Uh, getting cramped in the backseat. I know, I need a bigger plane. <laughs> no, no, no. This thing is like a TARDIS. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot bigger on the inside than you'd expect. Yeah. Has its own jacuzzi and everything. Yep. We can do hot tub streams if we wanted to. Not going to do that, but we could. So there, there would be an option for that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. <laughs> a 120 yeah i know i know i get my bikini Ooh, sexy <laughs> oh the doctor who reference i know it's like a tardis <laughs> so uh, yes exterminate exterminate <laughs> but it's uh, yeah it's a lot bigger on the inside than you expect <laughs> although it doesn't show it so yeah <laughs> i'll get my mankini again yeah, that. Uh, DFDD is not working. That's because we're not going from there, uh, buddy. We're not uh, flying from that uh, that airport. Uh, the uh, nearest airport we currently have is actually the one that we are flying for. That is Delta Romeo Romeo uh, November. 
Delta Romeo Romeo November. The one that we took off from is Delta Foxtrot Foxtrot Delta. So if you do, uh, Sandy, if you do exclamation mark route, you will see that it's Delta Foxtrot Foxtrot Delta. But the closest one, currently 60 nautical miles away, that is uh, Delta Romeo Romeo November. That's the one that we are headed for, actually. Uh, let me see. No, 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 no. Uh, pilot on again. Whoops. Mistakes were made. Navigation. Nav. Come on. Come on. Yikes. Romeo, Romeo, how Delta are you? <laughs> wow. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. What what have I done to deserve this? One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, four, then uh, five, 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 five. There we go. And we are on 11. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's better. By the way, I was counting the buttons here at the bottom. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That is the PFD options. There you go. Five, that is the bearing, which I can set. So I see I still have 85, uh, 58 nautical miles to go. And then 11 is back. <laughs> which is completely compared to uh, the uh, the buttons that I have on my, uh, on my class Echo. Which you can see right down there at the bottom if you look very carefully but that's how great this uh, this this thing really is it's 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 pretty cool it's a pretty cool kit and it will be uh there will be a few very cool things coming out for it as well so uh looking forward to uh, to showing you uh, you uh you guys that on on friday really looking forward to that one And we are still cruising, moving and grooving. We are now, as I said, in Niger. We are approaching Niamey. Niamey is the capital of Niger. About 900,000 inhabitants of total 24 million inhabitants of the country itself. The, uh, the country of Niger is landlocked in, uh, in Africa. It's, uh, it doesn't have any ocean access. Not a very good country currently at the moment. Had a lot of coup d'etats. They had a lot of uh, military coups right there in that country over the last years. Not that much stability. Not that much to export either. The only thing they actually have in quite a bit of abundance. Yeah, sounds like Mali. Basically, yeah. Fun fact though, the only thing they have in quite a bit of abundance is uranium. Uranium ore. Yeah. Not kidding. So... So it's not a very, very uh, inviting place to be, I'd say. Uranium, fewer, uh, uranium fever got me going down. <laughs> wow. All right, we still have Yuri in the distance right there, including Italian Yang Fan and Abled. Uh, we have uh, behind me Bizarro. And in front front of me right there i'm not sure who that is it's a catchy song from fallout why does that not that not surprise me ah that's red dragon right there good job we're up here then exactly no rads here no rads here thank god thank god yeah you you'd say uh, to be honest i i oh and we miss there as well we miss there as well you'd say actually that in a country where they have a resource like uranium they would be that that would mean they they had quite a bit of income but apparently not so yeah we'll be glowing by the time we land <laughs> you have that lovely glow uh, over you no 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 i don't no no <laughs> no radiation glow is not a good thing although it is easy because you never need a nightlight when you want to read so that's that's handy yeah. You know, there's always a positive in there somewhere. There is. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. That's how it works. Hmm. Talking about landing, let's see how long we still have to go. About 29 minutes. 
Airspeed Live, thank you very much. I, you already, you're already on Jamel's team as well. Good lord, dude. You're on Jamel's team as well. Honestly? <laughs> Jamel, are you just recruiting everyone? Are you? <laughs> the, the leader of hydrates. Not sure how that works, but there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just simply, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> he gifted me a sub. At least I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, they're ganging up on me, guys. They're ganging up on me. I feel so alone. <laughs> Running low on frequent Shoney miles. Oh, my God. How, dude? GTS Aviation at home building a new system. We'll tell you the specs later. I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Are we going AMD or are we going Intel? Are we going NVIDIA and AMD? Which direction are you taking? I am really interested currently because, as you all know, I run currently on a 2080 Ti. NVIDIA, I'm, I'm an Intel NVIDIA guy, but I hear so many good things about AMD, not just because it's a very good price, but also it's very cheap uh, running them. Basically, it, your next system will be a console. Yeah. Intel and NVIDIA. Ah, ooh, KF. Nice, nice. So with 13900, nice. Uh, Inno 3D, but uh, GTX, which version? GTX uh, or RTX, which version? 4090, yeah. That will run this quite smoothly there, uh, GTS av Aviation. That will run this very, very smoothly. So, yeah, very smoothly. NVIDIA is better for Microsoft Flight Simulator in general. I thought so too, yeah. I thought so too. I swapped AMD back uh, last winter. I was not uh, not disappointed. Yeah, the, the thing is, I hear very good things about uh, about AMD currently, but still, you know, I always get that feeling that um, somehow RTX cards and and Intel are more Microsoft general friendly. If you know what I mean. Yeah. By the way, uh, Captain John, two thousand sixteen. Welcome to the channel, buddy. Welcome to the channel. Thank you very much for that follow. I truly appreciate that. And uh, snuggle up bed right there in the back. Yeah, it, it is a bit crowded in there. I know. But if you snuggle up in between, it start, suddenly starts to open up like, like a TARDIS. There is a hut up in there. There's a bar in there somewhere. Uh, it's always five o'clock at that bar. Um... Just have a blast. You know, it's, it's, it's a thing in there. It's a thing. <laughs> For sim racing and a lot of peripherals, Attaché, it's better in my opinion. Uh, Intel always had issues with random disconnects and USB. Yeah, you're right. I still have that, by the way. Uh, which is quite bad in sim racing. Your wheel disconnects for two seconds mid-corner. <laughs> yeah, that's not something you want. Two seconds is more than enough to uh, make you enter the, uh, uh, the gravel pit, basically. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll absolutely do it. Uh, do you have problems with your autopilot? No, I don't actually. I haven't had problems with my autopilot for months. Uh, we had, of course, problems with the autopilot when it just came out. When Microsoft Flight Simulator just came out, we had a lot of autopilot issues, a lot of G1000 issues. It's uh, since, <laughs> since the hit post. <laughs> a little bit before that, actually, but... No, at uh, the last, well, at least year, year and a half, I have to say they, in my opinion, they solved the uh, the autopilot issues. Before that, um, yeah, it was kind of like activating Skynet. As soon as you all activated the autopilot, the thing just actively wanted to kill you. Yeah, it, li it, it, it was like, okay, I have my flight plan all figured out. I have everything entered. The flight level is correct. The flight level change is working. Everything is set. I'm on nav uh, heading. Everything is correct. Let's activate the autopilot. And straight down into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You could tick all the boxes. It still tried to kill you. Never had problem with sim racing. <laughs> ah. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to head off. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Don't worry there, Stealthwolf. Thank you very much for being here as always. I hope you enjoyed yourself, buddy. Again, I am here tomorrow at one o'clock Central European Standard Time. Uh, the timers that are running down at the bottom of the, uh, the stream, they're off by one hour, apparently. So I, tr I will try to change that tomorrow, by the way. Always had a good laugh here. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> good to have you here, buddy. So, yeah. I get close to the airport on runway. I get a beep and crash into the ground. Really? That's... Uh, huh. I, don't, I don't have that problem, to be honest. I don't have that problem. I, it works fine with me. Ooh, that, that's some close flying right there. Kind of weird, actually, that he, you didn't fade out there, uh, Red Dragon. Yeah, I'm flying so slow you guys don't catch up. <laughs> that's it, my friend. Right there. That, 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 that's as fast as I could go. I, just... <laughs> I can go out and push, but that's about it. No, that's about it. Flying the A320 last night, I finally figured out... Uh, the purple diamond in the heading are for glide path. <laughs> I felt like an idiot. Yeah, therefore, therefore the, the glide path. Yeah, the purple diamonds in the heading. That's basically when you when you capture your glide path. Actually, actually, I can show you what's happening right there. I can. So let's see, because I am now going directly. Procedures. There we go. Haha. Uh -huh. Select an approach. All right. Let's see. Boop. Let's see if I can select an approach here. Uh, I am on the South e uh, Southeast Asia server because it's basically it's the most stable one. Uh, I have to be on FMS, and I want an arrival. Enter. Now I am arriving on let's be E T R O. Am I saying this correctly? Etrot. Uh, can we find that? Etrot, yeah, that's the one. So that's that. From Banga. Well. The wrong way. Load. Enter. Yeah, there it is. So now I have my approach. That should be in there. With a little bit of luck, that will mean... Why am I going all over the... Oh, it's now redirecting to the... Uh, yeah, to the... Uh, yeah, okay. Let's see what it's doing here. It just adjusted the flight plan. New. Range. Uh, where's the closest airport? That's the one we're heading for, actually. <laughs> Delta Romeo, Romeo, uh, Delta, what, what, Delta Romeo, Romeo, November. That's unfortunately the one we are headed for right now. That's the closest one. Not kidding. You can see it right there. Closest one, 35 nautical miles out there. So, yeah. Now, once I have this set, actually... I could do an I can do an approach. So what we're going to try to do, actually, um, uh, Italian Yang fan, is we're going to try to do an approach on uh, on the G1000. And basically, it's kind of the same doing an approach on the G1000 as it is in uh, in Microsoft uh, in 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 the eighth, in in a commercial plane. Actually, there's not that much difference. Basically, excellent, buddy. Romeo, Romeo, coming. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? <laughs> uh, let me see. Now, what we also then need to know 
let's go to Navigrun. What I also need to know is I need to know the approach height, which is in this case, 2,500 feet. So I can overlay this on my map right here. I have the entire approach right there and the missed approach procedure. So what I want to do is I want to set my autopilot right now. I'm going to switch back Navigraph. I want to set my autopilot to 2,500 feet. And we are going down vertical speed about 800. So that should be good. Hello, my father is trying to steal my identity. How the, how is he doing that? I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm absolutely intrigued. So what, what you saw me do there was the following. <laughs> Jamal is back with his points. There you go. I redeemed that hi <laughs> I redeemed that hydrate. I almost drowned myself. Um, what I just did here, I loaded in the uh, approach for um, the approach for uh, for the airport that is Delta Romeo Romeo November on runway zero nine right. Zero 09 right, that's the, the approach that I actually loaded in. If I now go to flight plan, you can see that it's completely zero 09 right and it's 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 programmed in there. Actually, I could could use VNAV in this as well because VNAV works here. Don't have that, but you know, I didn't program it, but still. <laughs> choked on water in the process. Yeah, exactly. I did. Second thing I did was I set my altitude right here. I made sure that at the top I have the uh, ILS frequency set, which is 109.9. Uh, that is active right now. And as soon as we uh, near the approach, I will activate the approach button and everything will slowly but steadily, it, it should just basically glide me in. That's what it should do. And it works exactly the same as it would work in an airliner. There is hardly any difference. Uh, can I see you? Mm, nope. As you can see, I cannot see you. <laughs> I cannot see you. And by the way, moist as long as it's not leakage. <laughs> I'm fine. How far away are you? From the airport? I should be really close. I am... Uh, let me see. I think about... How far off am I? Hang on a tick. I'm going inside. Because then I can scroll in. Let's go back to flight plan. Let's that out i'm really really close i am really close i am a little under 25 nautical miles away uh, uh at runway zero nine right i'm under 25 nautical miles away but i cannot see you although yeah i can see someone there i think that is you as a yeah that should be you yeah that i think that's you my engine just died. How did you do that? Yuri, how did you kill your engine? You were... Where are you? You were there somewhere indeed, but yeah. Just went off. <laughs> um, did you have fuel? Just saying. It helps, you know, fuel, fuel. <laughs> yeah, fuelless, exactly. There's this thing you have to enter it, you know, and it's it's like liquid. You have to enter that into your plane and then it, it does a thing. It, it starts engines and stuff like that. So, yeah. Had enough fuel. Okay. <laughs> oh, the irony. Oh, the irony. I'm pretty sure that's what you get for not flying upside down, Yuri. The, pl the sim is just simply, it's not taking it. You have to fly upside down. That's, that's just what's happening. 
Maybe flying for hours while almost stalling isn't that good for an old plane. I told you, flying upside down is the way to go in your case. I'm not kidding. By the way, guys, if you are wondering what we are talking about here with Yuri, Yuri is one of the very few persons who I knew who actually flew several, not one, no, 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 several flights upside down during previous streams. You can rewatch that in Europe. This crazy idiot flew most of my flights along with me upside down. No kidding. So, yeah. And they say I'm mad. <laughs> if they say that, they're actually right, by the way. They're absolutely right. I will never deny that. Ever. Ever. Autopilot. There we go. I'm sending it back to autopilot so I can uh, uh, activate the approach as soon as we are near. We are now on the uh, final leg right here. Let's uh, show you guys. So, GPA. Range. God, I love this thing. Uh, there we go. As soon as we near uh, Ritat. I'm not kidding. That's what it's called. That is Romeo India uh, Tango Alpha Tango. Tango. Uh, we should be on the approach for uh, for the runway actually already. So what I'm going to do is I am going to slow a Tanga. <laughs> I'm going to slow. <laughs> really? You'll actually get a red card for that one. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to slow down the plane to about 80 nautical miles or 80, uh, uh, 80 knots. We're now at two and a half thousand feet. It's trying to... <coughs> Honestly, who was that? Ah, there he is. There he is. We right there up in the air. We have Yuri back there. We have a red dragon behind us. And in front of us, we have Ewald. We have Bizarro. We have Italian Yang Fan. And I am guessing Aaron? I'm guessing Aza is Aaron. Yeah, that should be Aaron. Yes. Weem! Indeed. It is the one, the only man with the ban hammer. Yes, <laughs> he shall smash thy in thy face when thou dost not a things. <laughs> Indeed, thou shalt be pounced upon, <laughs> and pounced upon thou shalt be. <laughs> Indeed. All right, we're now at about 82 knots. You can see that right there, which means we can deploy flaps one. Let's go to... F yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep flaps one going for now. Throttling up a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I figured as much. I figured as much. And there he is, upside down, as always. That's how... That's how I know you're there. You're upside down. That's how I know you're there. And doing the incredible, strange, weird spinning out thing. That's... <laughs> which I never, ever, ever been able to do in my plane. This plane just doesn't really want to do that. Yeah. And they call me batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> Indeed hype. Indeed the Shoney hype. All right, I am uh, throttling up a little bit. Southeast Asia, yeah. Server is Southeast Asia. Uh, let's turn on the landing lights, shall we? Just for the fun of it. Yeah, should be good. Landing lights are on. Yeah, we have a light. <laughs> and there shall be light in the darkness and I shall bring it. <laughs> Multiplayer settings could be, yeah. Make sure you're on all players, not live players. Make sure you're on all players, not on group. I made that mistake a long time. Yeah. Why don't I see anyone? Because you're on group, you dumbass. That would be me. Mistakes were made, indeed, and corrected after I, yes, uninstalled Microsoft Flight Simulator and reinstalled it and then figured out I was actually not on multiplayer, but on group only. Yeah. Well, we all made mistakes <laughs> in, in day one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I made multiple mistakes. I mean, 
Airspeed Live. Let's face it. There is a reason why that is there. There is a reason why that is there. Keep in mind, pilot's an idiot. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hashtag just saying. Mistakes are being made after day 600. And then some. Yes. And then some. All right, my friends. We should be nearing our approach uh, right now, actually. And then the fun starts. Uh... There we go. Bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> Hashtag fails. Exactly. <laughs> Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Actually, I'm going way too quick for my to have my uh, my flaps deployed. I just noticed I went over a hundred knots. Yeah, that's not good. Basically, uh, I'm in danger of ripping my flaps off. <laughs> no flappy flappy. Right. <laughs> Once again, mistakes were made. <laughs> I told you guys, I'm an idiot. Never claimed anything else. Never claimed anything else. So we are, we will make mistakes together. I'm learning every day. I know, but that's the thing is, you know. And I'm, I'm I mean, we're of course we're laughing about this. Yes, I make mistakes. Yes, I do. Absolutely, I do. Chonies are idiots. Indeed, I'm your idiot. But the thing is, you know, and that's the beauty of Microsoft Flight Simulator or Flight Simulator is flight simulation in general. I think. There's not much you can tell me about this plane anymore. After flying it for two years non-stop, there isn't a lot you can actually tell me about that plane. Really, there isn't. Two-tone! It is the one, the only Murph. It is the one and only Murph. How are you doing, Murph? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Shout out. Actually... Shout out. It should work. Exclamation mark. Shout out to Tone Murphy. Kind of works. <laughs> it kind of works. Go check out Two Tone if you have not uh, uh, discovered Two Tone yet. Uh, the question should be why haven't you? He's an awesome guy. Mr. Murph is an awesome guy, awesome guy. Great to have you here, buddy. Thank you very much for joining us on our uh, final approach. Speed, speed! Good Lord, what's going on? Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made! <laughs> why, God? Why does thou taunt me so? Oh, oh, Lord. No worries, you deserve it, buddy. What's going on? My plane is all over the place. Stop it! Knock it off. You rascal, you. Do as you're told. Do as you're told. Obey, my plane. Obey. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. Well, we're up to normal speeds again. <laughs> That'll teach me. <laughs> With how he's flying, landing rate is not going to be good. Italian Yank fan, what I'm trying to do here is basically what I'm trying to do is here. I'm just trying to uh, actually uh, make sure that uh, that I show you guys how you can do actually uh, uh, an ILS approach fully automatically in a plane like this. It's it it is possible. There's the redeem. Nearly drowned myself again. <laughs> You know, you know what handy when you start to swallow water? Don't inhale. Don't drink water over your lungs. Apparently, that's not a good thing. Who knew? <coughs> so that. <laughs> Super Typhon, good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Um, so, yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> close mouth. Stop talking. Have you ever seen me stop talking? Ever. I don't talk in my sleep. Ever. <laughs> I know. Scary thing is, I'm always like this. I'm not even sorry for Mr. Shoney Gaming. I'm not. 
She knew what she was getting into. She knew what she was getting into. Southeast Asia, buddy, server. Southeast Asia. I'm not sorry. Ah, we actually picked up the... Uh, we picked up the, uh, the ILS. Yay! So, right now, I can actually... What I can do, boop, is go to... Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, Murph, are you still here? I hope you are. I have something very, very cool. Well, actually, Friday, I have something very cool. Approach. That should work. Well, let's see. Where is my... There is my approach button. This. Come on. Boop. And let's go for approach. There we go. So now it should pick up the glide slope right here. And here is my approach. Ah, still here. Um you know what you know what this is, don't you? To uh, Murph, you know what you know what this is? This is the class echo, the shark sh the shake print class echo. On Friday, I will have a very cool reveal. A very cool reveal. I can't tell you right now, but it's going to be pretty particular. Yes, indeed. Let me see. Yeah, we should be on the correct approach. And if you don't know what the class <laughs> class fox <laughs> class fox who knows? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Pittsburgh Dev Team. Uh, how many countries are left on the tour? <laughs> Way too much to mention, buddy. Way too much to mention. By the way, Coxper, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a lot. Definitely a lot. Today, we actually ticked off another one. Uh, we are flying now from Burkina Faso to Niger. Uh, but uh, yeah, still a lot. We're, I think we... Kind of think we're over b between a hundred thousand and a hundred and twenty thousand kilometers. We're currently done. Uh, I actually did a calculation of the um, uh, a calculation of the uh, the um, uh, the amount of of kilo kilometers and and nautical miles we actually did in just Europe. That was sixty five thousand kilometers just Europe. So we currently have done, I think, about. Another 40 at least, another 40,000. So I think we we circumvented the world twice already and we're barely scratched the surface of Africa. So, and then we have to go to Asia and to North and South America. And yeah, and on and on and on. So, uh, pressure approach. It is, it is, uh, approach is on. It is on. It's slowly, if you look right here, you can see the glide slope coming down. So yeah, it's it's <laughs> we still have a lot to go. No, no, no. It's it's we're still good. You can see the glide slope coming down. It should pick it up right now and then slowly but steadily send me down to the runway. There it is. Picked up the glide slope. Yeah. It kind of works differently right now, Abelt, in the, the uh, G1000. It start blinky blinky and there it is. Ta-da! <laughs> No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's really strange right now. It's, it's completely different. I don't, I'm not doing anything. The plane is basically flying itself straight to the runway. This is no different, no different than flying a commercial plane like an, a 737-600 or, uh, or the Phoenix A320 uh, on, on approach mode into the in, into the airport so yeah the only thing i need to do actually right now is make sure that i throttle down because i'm going way too fast i'm now going currently about 76 knots i want that back to about 65 that would be ideal well there we go there we go 65 all right we can now go up a little bit there we go there we go that's what we want 
Uh, you do that in the settings, uh, buddy, Aaron. You do that in the settings. It is targeting the runway, basically. Yeah, it is. Right here, the, uh, lo uh, the localized right here, that is actually targeting the runway. And the green diamond right there, that is the glide slope. So it's, it's, it, it's got it. It's locked in. It's going down right now. There's not much I need to do, actually. Just make sure I control the speed. The flaps are in flaps, too. So that's fine. I don't really need... You could officially, in, in the FAA recommends, you could go to full flaps. But the thing is, uh, I'll show you when we touch down. I can't do it right now, unfortunately, because the game freezes. Um, we currently have a 14 knot headwind. Much that's, that's comfortable enough for a Flaps 2 setting, actually. So, yeah. General settings traffic. Thank you very much there, uh, Italian Yang fan. So we're coming in on the glide slope right there. It's bringing us now down nice and slow. We don't need to do anything. Zooming in on the runway right here so we can see where we need to park. We need to park on the right-hand side. So all I need to do now is uh, hang back, relax, make sure we have enough airspeed <laughs> and don't crash. And that's it. Are we landing? Yes, we are. Oh, piloting is such a hard job. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> Watch out for hippos. No need. <laughs> oh, it's so tough. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, coming in for a landing is the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Still good. Yep. Need a bit more power. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now that's. I mean. Don't get me wrong. Usually, when you do this manually, it's it's feels like me and an A320. You'll kind of like it, doesn't it? Yeah, kind of like that. Oh yeah, it's a. <laughs> I'm really, really downplaying this, by the way, my friends. It's a lot harder than it looks. It really is. It really is. Hashtag safe point. Exactly. Safe point. Safe point. Oh my lord. Yeah, the thing is, you're constant. What you're actually constantly doing is you're trying to to uh, figure out the correct speed and stuff like that. So in my case, I am going a little bit too quickly right now. We're coming in quite nicely on the runway right here. Uh, we have a uh, now a 11 knot headwind. It's bouncing around a little bit. Straight headwind right here. If we look outside, we're coming in quite nicely. And there are a lot of things you need to check. It's it's not that easy. But knowing how to program your plane, knowing how to use the, the autopilot, knowing how approaches work, knowing what ILS can do for you, it really does help out a lot when you're flying. Once you actually learn that, and you can learn that in, as you see, the G1000 quite nicely, once you get the hang of that stuff, you can extrapolate that basically to a plane. Casablanca, yeah, yeah, yeah. Casablanca is currently the uh, the runway right there. I just turned off the autopilot, by the way. I turned it off. And now we're coming in for a nice glide. One of six. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Landing lights go off. Actually. Is there a turn off point? Yeah, but it's way too far. I'm going to turn around right here, by the way. This is not what you're supposed to do. It is what I'm doing, but it's not what you're supposed to do. By the way, if you're a first timer, stay in the air. Stay in the air. We're not landing yet. I'm... Stealing two tones thing. I've done that for quite a while, actually. Stay in the air. <laughs> We're doing a landing, my friends. We're doing a landing show. Not a first timer, so I can land. <laughs> That's fine, buddy. That is absolutely fine. I've been spoiled. We've been spoiled with minus 20 landings. It, I don't think it's a. 
Yuri, you're batshit crazy. I really think you're batshit crazy. Uh, I don't think it's actually possible to do that in GA planes anymore. My, below minus 20 landings because of the uh, the uh, effects of the wind that, uh, and, and the weather that, that we are now having. I don't think it's actually possible. Why is wind not showing up correctly? That is so strange. All right. I am going to park it right here because we have a lot of space. There we go. Boop. I'm going, uh, let's go outside. Go outside. And why is this not showing? There we are. Showcase. Reset. Bippity boppity boop. And we are going to camera mode. We are starting the music. We should be starting the music. Why is it not starting? There it is. There it is. That's better. All right. Whee. All right, guys. Come on in for a landing. No one is there, so we're going over here. Red Dragon coming in. Bizarro. Able behind him. We have uh, Weem already on the ground. Uh, Yuri is doing things. <laughs> doing things. Yuri is... is there <laughs> doing Yuri. <laughs> All right, Red Dragon coming in for a landing right there on runway 09 right. Now, I don't understand the thing. I mean, 09 right, is that dust strip right there? Is that 09 left? Are you kidding me? That's zero nine left. They actually want to include that in nine right and nine left. Honestly, Yuri zooming along, heads up, 27 left. <laughs> and Red Dragon is on the ground. We have Bizarro following him. I am wondering, by the way, when will the, uh, the the caravan actually get the update? When will the caravan get the update, my friends? I mean, if working title is now working on the uh, the TBM, what can we expect next? I hope the caravan will get its uh, well-deserved uh, upgrade, actually. Yeah, I think... I think that is actually 09 left? This is 09... Shit, is this 09 left? Really? I think it is. Right, left. Yeah. That's so weird. That is so weird. <laughs> All right. Abelt and Yuri behind each other right there. Yuri, come in for a landing, buddy. Come in for a landing. Crop Duster Ronda. Yeah, basically. Could have moved the bush. <laughs> yeah. And nicely coming in for a landing right there. I can't see you, buddy. I don't know what's going on, but I cannot see you. I cannot find you anywhere. Abel just landed. Yuri is coming in. Yuri, you need to be upside down for a landing. <laughs> is he actually going to land? Don't inhale. Exactly. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Look at that. And on the runway. That's insane. Yuri, I don't know what's wrong with you, but it's no little thing. <laughs> it's no little thing. And Aaron coming in for a landing as well. The, the, the final closer right there. Ooh, a little bit off, but that's fine. That's fine. That one is. Slight bounce. But it's on the ground. Well done, my friends. Well done. And that's it for today, my friends. We have landed in Niger. We are now in Niami. Niami right there. That is the capital of Niger. The cabin crew has ticked off another country. 
another belt on their notches. And we are now heading back towards... Uh, where are we heading tomorrow, actually? Tomorrow we are heading for... Uh, let me see. We are heading for Benin. Benin. Yep, Benin it is. All right, I'm going to take the uh, obligatory picture, as always. Take a screenshot. There we go. I took the screenshot, and I will share that in the chat. Clips and highlights. So if you want to see that, you can find that in our Discord channel. For now, I want to wish you all a very, very, very nice, uh, nice Wednesday. Wednesday or Wednesday evening. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I will be back here tomorrow. We will be taking off from this runway right here. That is Delta Romeo Romeo November. And it was a great laugh. Well, I hope I can always make a great laugh for you. The most important thing is, don't forget to laugh and smile. And I really, really mean that. We have a lot of crap going on in the world. So why not have a little bit of a laugh and a smile? So yeah. Tomorrow, I will be back 1 o'clock Central European Standard Time. That is 1200 Zulu. So, I will be here. We will be continuing our flights into Benin. And on Friday, we have the special day. The day that will be filled with special stuff. So, uh, looking forward to that one. Really looking forward because I have not done that many commercial flights. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great evening. Have a great day. And uh, don't forget to laugh and smile. Bye-bye, all. I mean, the wing flex, it is so cool that... It's going up and down. I feel bouncy. I feel bouncy. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Three, two, one, zero. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Chew. Mmm. Mm. Chew that goodness, no, baby. No. Oh, you know you like it. Oh. Oh, you know you like oh. it, Tony. <laughs> wow. I did not expect that. They move. Yeah, one of the big five. Baganario, yes. No! <laughs> Thank you all for being here and uh, have a great, great evening or a great day. I will see you all again tomorrow. Bye all.